Peace be with you and welcome back to Humankind Both, Exploring the Middle Path. We just left off on the note that Rosalind um, provided for us. Can we go back to that note? Yes, <laughs> we sure can. Um, of course, we are not near to this state of being a having one world government in which included with that would be one world language that all the people of the world can understand besides their own native language, okay? Um, that would be pretty interesting, too. Um, let's see. You're talking about the agriculture? Yeah, agriculture, agriculture to me was very interesting. Yeah, uh, agriculture. So basic. We, we go right back to an agricultural way of living. Um, my feeling is that we would possibly cut down on having so much cars, or if we do continue having cars, maybe it would be the cars would run on energy that wouldn't be so toxic to the environment. Um, that and that goes as far as our um, airplane business, bus, you know. Um, Let it fuel. Yeah. So the culture of work would not be so based on this nasty competitiveness and first we have to reach the lesser peace according to the Baha'i faith in which all the nations will lay down their weapons and then we can reach the greater peace well <laughs> that's interesting and that's exactly the reason why Mirza Ghulam Ahmad peace be upon him was sent and he came after Baha'u'llah and after Bob and Bahula, around the same time. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said that now is not the time for violent jihad. Mm -hmm. Jihad meaning struggle, not holy war, but violent um, warfare. He said that over 129 years ago. Mm -hmm. He said that we must fight now with dialogue, with spirituality, with love. Our fight now is with compassion. Mm -hmm. Our fight now is with education. Education and and, and br building bridges, and not build, children. not b breaking down the walls that separate us, mm -hmm. and building bridges that unite us. And that's where that global idea but of having one I don't village. think that we're ready. I don't think the human, as hardwired and as constructed, would work with a overarching. United Nations with the elites telling everybody else what to do. No, but who, who would the elites be? Is uh, it hereditary? To eliminate elites. Or, no, no, no. Or elites. Well, elites, elites become elites because they e either have done something very spectacular. Or they were elected. Or they well, were ele elected. They could be elected. But, but what is the description of a 2018 elite? which the 1% versus the 99%. We have... Well, are you talking about the... Uh, how about the baseball players that just signed a contract for $250 million? They're all multimillionaires that are playing those games. So why does that exist? Why do we, why do we have a... Socrates wait a minute, loves wait, that question. Wait a why why do we have this fun every game? city, major city, has its own tribe? Represented by the basketball team, the football players, the baseball players, and we're going to win, we're going to beat these guys. It's competitive. That's what's hardwired in the human. If you're going to give up Which is not a bad thing. It's not a bad well, thing to be competitive. But if you're it's gonna, only when you look out for yourself you, that it becomes competitive. If you're going to give up all of, you, all of your money, okay, that you, you can earn, mm -hmm. all right, for somebody else yeah. who feels that they're victimized. Yeah. And and for whatever reason, uh, is not successful in this competitive world which we've grown up with. Whose fault is that? Who and everybody's going like this. Yeah, they're pointing. No, no, no. You should be pointing this way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Excuse me. I knew I was going to get it.
Okay, according to Baha'i writings, um, an, another major principle besides um, the fact that um, there, in God's eyes, there's no such thing as black or white. Mm -hmm. There has to be equality between men and women. And a woman does not want to see her sons going off to war and coming back in a casket. Baha'is, we don't get involved in politics, but we do vote. Mm -hmm. But when there is more of an equality between men and women in the world, we will see a cut down on these wars. What do you mean by equality though? Do you mean absolute equality? Because this is a discussion that we've, we've, we've had as well because mm -hmm. the reality is that we need, we need that sense of equality, mm -hmm. right? And women and men are biologically different. Technically mm -hmm. speaking, women are biologically superior to men. They have a thousand 1,100 more genes than a man do because w women have XX, men have XY. We're missing a chromatin. Mm -hmm. You're able to carry a child in your mm -hmm. womb. This is why Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, paradise lies under the foot of the mothers. And interestingly, in the Quran, 1,400-year-old scripture that has not been changed since its inception says, you are all created, where it talks about the verse that no one is superior to another, it says you were all created from one single being, nafsin wahidatin, a feminine mm -hmm. single being. Because uh, and, and, and and the and, and then it says that we 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 have divided you into tribes and sub tribes that you may recognize one another and learn from each other. If we were all the same, if you had the same food every day, three times a day, you would grow disgusted of it. Diversity, God says in the Quran, we have created you in diversing hues and different colors as a beauty, as a sign. Oh, come right? flowers of one garden. All exactly. Colors. And it says the most honorable among you is not the one whose demographic or background is this or that. The most honorable among you is the one who does the best deeds, who is the most righteous. So you have to think about this, that, yes, sports to me is... And when I played football in high school, you know, I was, you know, quarterback, and they, it's an escape from the politics from the world, and they know it's okay to be tribal in that sense because wars, even though little fights yep, might happen, yeah. wars don't erupt. How come we can't be like that in society? You have your religion, I have my religion. We learn to find the common ground and find an excuse to work together for building societies up rather than saying I'm better than you like Iblis did like Prophet Muhammad said Satan is in our blood mm -hmm. overcome that transform that right mm -hmm. and make it into something where you don't talk somebody down mm -hmm. and say I'm above you but you talk to them and say how can I serve and help you but I this has to be like done from right. a f familial level I have to say from a familial level mm -hmm. start at home you, and this is what the Quran teaches you. Mm -hmm. It brought a barbaric, a backward society to being moral, to being transcendently spiritual. Mm -hmm. Spirituality, although people have the right to be atheists, you're, you're leaving, you know, it, people's uh, scientific discoveries have shown that you, when people pray, they use a portion of their mind that atheists don't use. And they've shown that it's CAT scans. It's, it's the idea of transcendency that your soul, all of our souls might look the same. Our, we, our flesh looks the same when you take our skin off. But the human condition, we have because a Muslim, survival, survival. Muslim, a Muslim writer that I'm <laughs> going to give you today. A so-called Muslim writer. I, because who, who can represent the faith but Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? Well, I agree with that, but I'm saying a Muslim writer. I didn't say that he, he was an Islamist, okay? He, he's not following Islam, but he, he's, he is one of the respected writers. He has a 32-volume uh, dissertation on what Islam is, okay. and his writing says, Women are silly. They are weak, and they are scattered. And they have to follow the man. 
Yeah, but and they should fear the based man. Based on what though? Based on the uh, Quran? Wh wait a minute. I'm or just based on so his interpretation. So whatever the whatever Beware the Beware of wolves dressed in sheep's clothing. That's <laughs> Jesus' own <laughs> teaching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. <laughs> but, <laughs> but but the ma fact of the matter is here is a major yeah, Muslim yeah, yeah, scholar that can manipulate that is manipulated mm -hmm. and we're gonna be talking about this later, you and I. Yes, yes. So f for all the good that has been brought by Jesus. Muhammad, peace be upon him. All of those leaders, we still have today. What happened yesterday? Be that's the hey, struggle. What, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. We have to be Muhammad. Who, 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 who have who to be? up Kabbal, yes. Yeah. Tom, Islam specifically teaches this. We are not here to worship Jesus or Muhammad or peace be upon them all or any of those people who brought about these revolutionary well, the, changes. The Christians well, want to believe it. No, no, no. But listen to what I'm saying. Yeah, but instead, instead of worshiping those dead figures, Let's rise up to be like them in yeah, our society. Be Christ-like, be yeah. Socrates-like, be Muhammad-like, be Promised Messiah-like. Be like them and be it for, number one, for yourself, for your family, for your neighbor, for your city, for your state. You have to start at home. Mm -hmm. So this is the thing. This is what our Khalifa is doing. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this is what every yeah. faith is saying. It's empowering we, you. We, we raise the issue of... Bill Gates. Bill Gates. <laughs> Thank you. Bill Gates. This is what a 78-year-old mind thinks like. <laughs> Bill Gates. He did that. He was taking care of family first. Good. Okay. Good and boy, did he take care of them. Look at all the wealth he created for a whole bunch of people. Hundreds of thousands of people employed in good positions that weren't there before. Well, that's what and Imam said. Wait a minute. And that's what Imam said. When look after him. Yeah. And I and I agree. He doesn't need that 55,000 square foot house to to, to yeah. take the environment. No, no. Down. But they're entire. The Prophet Muhammad can can I, have said. He said. He said. If you have somebody said somebody was wearing nice clothes, you know. Of, of course, the Prophet, although Khadija, uh, may God be pleased with her, she was 15 years older than Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. She employed him. She. Um, proposed to him 1400 years ago and she gave half of her wealth to him including some of whom were she, slaves she and he gave freed all them. her wealth, yeah, she, she gave she gave all now, her wealth. now what happened what did he do he redistributed it but there were some people that came up to him and said oh, people say that I wear nice clothes and that I should donate and Prophet Muhammad no. said no he, he God has clothes. given it to you and as long as you give a portion like Imam said a portion to the charity it has become halal it has become lawful for you to enjoy a little right. bit of that when you give some of it to the poor people. And that's all that Islam requires, that all that religion requires. So somebody came, on, the hand, on the other hand, on the other hand, what nation yeah. Yeah. gives the most in charity? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, probably but the. Percentage the wise, how much is given in charity? Well, the United States gives Six, far more. Seven trillion dollars. How many of those trillions of dollars are given? to what you consider or call charities. We, we know what the national budget is. We just talked about 51% or whatever <laughs> the number is goes into our military. We have yeah, that a figure, number I'm of gonna, We're going to discuss that figure because right. it's more like 7%. What percentage? And yeah. I asked this the, of, of Where's Bill the 93%? Where's the other 93% going? Social Security? Tom, Medicaid? Tom, hold on, hold on. Medicare. D d have you stopped by a Department of Social Services building? Yes, I have. Lately. Have you? Yeah. You, do you know how many poor people... I'm, I, I have my family development credential. I'm a social worker. I know. Okay, I'm certified. Do you know how many poor people have been kicked out of TANF, uh, uh, food stamps, uh, Medicaid, single parent families who are making under the median income are technically poor and homeless you're considered homeless if you're over the age of 23 25 and you're living with your parents you're considered homeless how many and the and you know what's happening no you know parents have come up to me and told me in where where I used to work at CCSU at the preschool parents came up to me and said I, we have been denied Medicaid for our children and their single parent families. They're making un and they're making thirty thousand a year and they're running around yeah. and they have been denied. What that they want you to see is that, but yeah. it's not yeah. actually yeah. happening. Well, yeah. we're dealing with it in our family right now, okay, w which we're supporting because he can't even get medication. That's what I'm saying. All right, because so he earned too much money last last year. 
Not this year. Compared to the people that and don't have anything, Tom. And he has he makes a thousand dollars a month from from Social Security. No, that's it. Total. What do you mean that's it? That's all the money he has per month for for total living expenses. He, they found out he's you got, got a high blood. Wait a minute. He's mm -hmm. got high blood pressure. He was near dead. He needs medications. Well, he's already underprivileged because he, he's over a certain age, he can't right? Get, he can't get any money. Yeah. There's no help for him. That's my point so exactly. So there, there's no justice. There, there's there's no not justice. a just division of, you know, the but if you're national if you're, income. But this is fascinating. If you're taxes. an illegal alien, you get all of that free. Yeah, but I, I know exactly but because my, my significant other is a professor of medicine at Yale, and she says her own friends and, and neighbors... Many of them don't qualify for literally hundreds of thousands of dollars of chemotherapy mm. to go to the uh, yeah, right. Smilo Hospital yeah, right here, yeah, yeah. where people, foreigners that aren't even you know illegal immigrants, walk through the front door of that hospital and have to be treated and are literally getting hundreds of thousands of dollars of treatment that we are paying for, the, the American taxpayer is paying for. There is such injustice uh, in almost everywhere that you look. Yeah, but if you look at relatively, if you look at where they're fleeing from, they're fleeing war-torn countries where, let's face it, America has started that war there. And let's face it, if it didn't start it there, then it's continuing there's on. A lot that, if it didn't that is very much in dispute. You tell me no, Mexico's war no, 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 no. started because of us? Uh, <laughs> you don't know about the dr the black market and the drug war. Oh, I do know. Okay, okay. I do know. So you don't think you don't think that there are people in high positions that are in government authorities that are uh, the point. The point is this. The point is this. We have to understand. We are a global village. We have to un put ourselves in the shoes of the people. Where are they coming from? Where are they flee? Give them the temporary support. Give them support them there. What? What, what what support them there where bombs are being dropped by Russia and America on a daily basis and millions of people are I'm losing talking their about lives. El Salvador. Oh, Mexico. Panama. Okay, okay. All, all of that southern region. Yes. yes okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. And, that's and, and what okay. happened when we took in the El Salvadorans? When they had that catastrophe down here, we brought them all up here temporary oh, yeah, yeah. temporary visas. No, 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 no. It's time yeah, to go yeah. home. What happened? They stayed. Yeah, they stayed. Right. Yeah, I mean, many that well, immigrants. You know, our Khalifa also said immigrants have to be just. Number one, integration doesn't mean to lose your identity. It means that you are loyal to the country that you are residing in. That is an Islamic so tenet. Taking you right? in, right? Not is that taking it. Also, if you not if you that's not a, a but if your visa Muslim, has expired, that's not a Muslim <coughs> belief. That is an it Islamic is, no, 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 belief. In, in, yes, 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 yes. In, in the Holy Quran, it says, obey. Those I in authority know among you, right? Says, and I agree. I agree. So, it's so immigrants so, should secular. also not over overstay but their stay. That's the other thing. Too. Well, they should be just too. They should not overstay their stay, but they should try their best. Uh, that, that's where the loyalty to the country comes in, because if one country is giving you this free pass that you can come, so when we are talking about this, we're talking about individuals. Then we are not talking about one religion. Because if it doesn't matter if what, whatever the religion says, if that individual is not doing what his religion is saying, Practice. then that uh, individual is doing something wrong. Then there is nothing wrong with the teaching of that religion. Right. It's the person. So we are talking about, about all these um, issues that we face here. We talked about an elite group that we see in different nations. So if we go back in time and we see how those people were living, then we dig down and we see that, you know, how w those people were so brotherly that there were no, we do not see a lead group or the richer are getting richer. If we go back when the Muslims were ruling, and this is an incident of one of the country, uh, I think about a thousand years ago or 900 in that uh, time period, I talked about the zakat, the people, they were paying zakat. Zakat is the term we talked about they would give the text. Does, doesn't matter if they are Muslims, Christians, Jews, atheists, all those who are living in that country, they were paying that. The government, there was a reserve fund, everything was going there, and then whoever is the needy and poor, they were supporting them. Justly. Justly. Yes. The time came 
when the government, the other armies were coming to destroy them, the government said that we cannot protect you anymore. And they said that all the tax money that we have taken from you, we are returning it to you because we cannot protect you anymore. This is the level of uh, just. just that we see, that yeah, they, they had. And I even at... Like the, the Greeks had the, the golden age of Greece, you know, 500 B.C. It was a golden age of, I, I'm picturing it as Islam, say 1000 A.D., where the society was so peaceful and so intellectual yeah. Uh, but that only happens in in the history of, of human history. There are just a few civilizations. There was a Christian civilization called the Byzantine civilization, yeah. uh, 400, 500 uh, A.D., you know, that was very peaceful. Uh, the Christians were living in monasteries. They were growing their own food. There were no wars anywhere in the world. It only lasts for 100, 200 years before the a more aggressive, Empire, yeah. you know, in this case, Genghis Khan and, you know, invaders that are physically, mentally, and socially much more aggressive and want to, you know, dominate people in society. And so I would, just off the top of my head, 90% of the history of mankind, and here's where I'm going to just very quickly, here's up my book. This is, this is my Bible. <coughs> Uh, I, I think of this as a super Bible. This is uh, Bartlett's book of quotations. It has its compilation. Bartlett is a, is a British preacher that lived in 1850, uh, something like that. And he tried to compile from the earliest written languages the most important philosophical, religious, scientific, whatever ideas. And it goes back to only historical people. So in the year 2600 BC, there was uh, a pharaoh, uh, and I, I forget which one he was, but he was the first one who wrote something historical, and it was the same questions that we have today. I cannot answer. It, it, someone like that. I cannot answer. And he asked the same questions. No one returns. We know not what we go to when we pass from... You well, know, man Earth. doesn't learn from his past. It's proven right probably in that book. These are, are age-old issues. People like Hitler, let's just say, you know, I, I, I don't mean to... That's a perfect example. This goes back to the question, why does evil, suffering, injustice exist? Maybe it's there so that everybody else who has differences can find a unity and unite against that injustice. You're not uniting against a religion or a one individual or one party. You're uniting against injustice in general, whatever manifestation it comes in. There's manifestation of, of God's power, there's manifestation of justice, peace, Muhammad, Jesus, peace be upon them all. Then there's manifestations of injustice. What do you do? You harness them, use them as a focal point for everybody else to unite. That's the point. You and learn a whether very you, big lesson. Yeah, whether you agree or not, whether whether you agree scri scripturally or whether yes. you agree, uh, you know, uh, 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 constitutionally, you come together to fight that injustice. Right. Let me just say one thing. Why can't we do that today? <laughs> because we're different. Mm -hmm. We we can't accept our differences. You're saying. We've been talking about wealth. What is what is wealth? I would d defer to. Uh, a group in Italy that don't measure wealth by money or assets or savings I or anything. I love where you're going. This is the direction that I would love they, to go. They measure wealth by, by how healthy they are, how happy they are, and how well they live. It's a total Big different no. wealth. Absolutely. Okay? No. So mm -hmm. why do we disparage so many somebody who's unhappy, who has all this money, are are they wealthy? Well, they have material things, but are they but are they wealthy otherwise? No, they're not. They're not happy at all. I grew up. And my dad was an orphan, penniless, basically, no father in the home. His friends were all super wealthy. I'm talking about their children at three years old were worth over five million dollars in the 1930s. That's real wealth. Absolutely. Yeah. Every one of those families 
was in chaos. Every single one. Well, even rappers have said more money is more problems, right? The who whole discovered it? Over and over again? Buddha? Mohammed, peace be upon him. What was, what was his wealth? Socrates. Look, all the people that came, the, the wealth that Mohammed, peace be upon him, brought to the people was the connection with God, right? Through prayer. He prayed five times a day. That was made incumbent in Islam. And the way his example showed how to give life to people, not just so that physically they can die again, but so that their philosophy can live on and affect other people, which is by redistributing. But the wealth that he had was his prayer, his worship. And that prayer alone was transformative. Then on top of that, you go out and you act, and you act to, uh, to society. So that is your action with your creator, your meditation, right? That you're at peace, you have wealth. Then you go out and take it to society. This is the prophecy that Prophet Muhammad, uh, he mentioned, that the prom when the promised Messiah will return, and the manifestation of the second Messiah will appear, that he will distribute the wealth to the people. And people, they will reject, and they will not accept that wealth. Which wealth he was talking about? This is the wealth that we are talking about. No, happiness. Exactly. Oops, education. Community. He was saying education. that he will come, he will yes. say that this is how you create peace in the society. This is the wealth. But nobody how you should be just to the people, yeah. how you take care of your neighbors and all that. So people, they are rejecting this we yeah. see today. Yeah. And that's why when we compare the age that we live in today with the people who were in the past, the Holy Quran says that these are the favors of God upon you, but people, they reject these favors. Mm -hmm. And uh, only the men of understanding they will understand. So we see a very small group yeah. of people in the world today are the men of understanding yeah. who understand that these were the favors in the past. Yeah. That what was the reason that the Muslims they were ruling the world at one time? Then what yeah, was what, what was the reason that, that the the all of a sudden the downfall was there because yeah. they yeah. stop accepting those favors? Yeah. Kafir means one, right. the, the traditional translation is infidel people, are, no, believe it, but it really means ungrateful, to be right. ungrateful. They yeah. became ungrateful, their, yeah. their society fell. Everybody reaches a peak, and then they, like I said, it's a sine right. wave. Humanity exactly. is a sine wave. We okay. have to go back to the times of the prophets. We have to go back. Our Khalifa said we're so focused on the progress of the world. Right now we have to be focused on saving the world. The rulers on the Ottoman Empire, they had gotten more into smoking opium. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. let's see, all the women, thousands of women in their harems. Yeah. Um, we are, we're going through this here in this society. It is collapsing. Mm -hmm. uh, people who are all into the opioids. So. Yeah. What's going around is coming around. Historically, if we look at the year 2018, the beginning of our third millennium in the common era, Tom and I are in our 70s, this is a transition period. And especially with the President of the United States that we have now, and the, the, you know, the contrast between what the Democrats had they won and the Republicans has created worldwide this is a perfect time of learning and transition. So, so yes, yeah, so, so we'll continue this.